Welcome to Farm Talk, where we look at issues that affect agriculture and ranching here in the natural state. Brought to you by Heritage Agriculture. Here is your host, Mike Linton. Welcome to Arkansas Farm Talk. I'm your host, Mike Linton. Today's guest is Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Tim Griffin. Tim, welcome to Arkansas Farm Talk. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Yeah, well, I, hey, I want to warn you now, my 10-year-old's here in the studio. Yeah. And I saw him eyeing these. Okay. Well, so you're... if you if you turn away, these are li liable to end up in the truck going to the house. Well, I'd rather sell a big one. But anyway, I'm happy to sell them. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, I can afford these, <laughs> particularly if he takes them off without you seeing them. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We're happy to be here. Okay, let me ask you, let's get into some questions. COVID-19 has had a huge impact on our state, our farmers, and our ranchers. From your travels around the state and visiting with our farmers and ranchers, what's your take on COVID-19? How's it affected everything? Sure. Well, first of all, uh, I'll state the obvious, which is from a health perspective, it has impacted uh, a lot of folks around the state in the farming community in the ranching community etc but from a from a broader perspective you know one of the things that it's done it's 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 certainly slowed certain parts of the economy down yes. but particularly is the labor market you know we we count on a lot of folks farmers count on and and, and our incredible agriculture uh, industry here in the in the state we count on folks coming from overseas to, to work every every year on H-2A's visas. And uh, th the fact is that's been frozen. Mm -hmm. And so you have a lot of farmers and, and ranchers who count on those folks like clockwork. They're gonna be here every year. Some of them have, have been working for the same folks, as you know, for years sure. and years and years. And they've developed a relationship with them. They come, they do the work, they leave. This year, that's not happening. And so what you've got uh, in a lot, of, uh, a lot of parts of the state, if you've got more work, then we've got the workers uh, to, to deal with that. And uh, that's, that is still one of the top problems, labor shortage, uh, in, in the farming community that I've heard about. And um, I would, I would uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that, that Rick Crawford early on recognized this and started this Farm Corps uh, program. And, you know, it, it, it was not, it, he was not under the impression it was gonna cure it, but he thought, and, and he asked me to help, and I was glad uh, to do it, uh, but he thought it might help a little bit uh, around the edges. And the point was, find veterans and, and service members in the Guard or what have you who are out of work yeah. and match them up with farmers who need labor, right? And and, farm equipment dealers. Yeah. Because I can tell you, you know, seven locations statewide yeah. with everything going on, we hadn't had the first person come in and apply for a job. Wow. You know, wow. And, and we need people. Yeah. I mean, we've got stuff going. We're looking for service technicians. We're looking for people. Well, you know, I, I think that uh, there's certainly a lot of people who need the jobs, and part of the issue is marrying those two up, the, the people that need the workers with the workers that need the jobs. And in the areas where there's a lot of service members, like, like Jonesboro, where there are guard uh, centers and, 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 uh, uh, and a lot of guard uh, soldiers are there, then it worked better than some of the remote areas. Uh, but, but it, you know, it, it, it's not the cure-all. But it's just, it was an attempt to recognize that this is a problem. And, uh, and this, this remains a problem. I think that this is something that a lot of farmers continue to struggle with. Yeah, we do. I, I promise you they do. And the early part of the year when COVID-19 was announced, the biggest issue was all the rainfall. Yeah. Now, we, we kind of like a little bit of rain. It was nice to get a little bit yesterday, finish out the corn, finish out some of these little beans trying to come up. Get, get them up out of the ground and started. And then, of course, it's always good for the hay ground. Sure. You know. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you just real quickly on, on this. If you talk to a lot of folks, they'll tell you that some of the, some of the way that the federal benefits were structured is it, it, it took people who otherwise would go and look for that work and maybe provided, uh, provided enough money for them not to do that yeah. in some instances. And I don't know how widespread that, that is, but that has been uh, discussed as a, as, as a negative impact of the way that, that federal legislation was structured. Yeah, well, I know farmers and ranchers don't want a handout. 
Right. There's nothing wrong with a hand up sometimes right. because there's so many factors that they can't control yeah. that's out of their control. So if that's the case, like I said, nothing wrong with a hand up, but yeah. nobody really wants a hand up. Well, and, and the farmers and, and the folks like you that are looking for workers are the ones that, that have been hurt by that because they're waiting, as you said, I have, you just said I hadn't had a bunch of people applying for, for jobs, if any. Well, you would think with people getting laid off that that would happen. Yeah. So um, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the economy is going to get back on its feet and you're going to see more activity. You know, I tell people, I tell my kid uh, who are going to start school soon, you know, this too shall pass. It will. It's a horrible, horrible deal. But, but this too shall pass. We will get through it. We'll learn a lot. We'll be stronger. But right now, it, it's a mess for a lot of people. It is. I'm going to change channels on you. Yep. Let's talk about taxes. Yep. Okay. Uh, what are some of the ideas you have for lowering the overall tax burden and reforming the tax code for uh, not just our Kansans, businessmen, uh, business people, and especially our farmers and ranchers? Yeah, well, I'll talk generally first. Then I want to talk specifically about something that I hear a lot from farmers, both in aquaculture and, and agriculture. Um, first of all, generally, we're taxed too much in this state. Uh, if you look at our rankings around the country, we have made progress, I wanna be fair about that, we have made progress, but we have a long way to go, particularly as it relates to the income tax, because who do we wanna attract? We wanna attract people with income, mm -hmm. right? And uh, when you've got Tennessee uh, to the east, and Texas to the west, neither of which have income tax, that continues to be something that, mm -hmm. that we've got to focus on. But, but you can't just look at the income tax. The real, the, the, the real statistic, the real number we've got to look at is the overall tax burden. You know, if, if each pocket is a different kind of tax, mm -hmm. income and sales and property, whatever, you don't really ultimately care which pocket it came out of. Yeah. What you're concerned about is how much money total left your genes. That's it. That's overall tax burden. We can get into which one uh, takes what, but the, our overall tax burden that each Arkansan, whether you're a farmer, small business person, whatever, the overall tax burden is too high. And sometimes we'll reduce taxes over here. Uh, if you look back in our history, we reduce them over here, we raise them over here. Mm -hmm. So you feel better about this, and then they get you on this side. You know, what's driving this? I, I think ultimately it's fair to say the need for revenue in state government drives our high taxes. Yeah. And if you look at some of the statistics, we've got to continue to work to have a leaner, smarter, more efficient state government. If I was not an elected fit official, I would tell you straight up, I want all my tax dollars to be spent wisely, yeah. and uh, and they're not. Yeah. Hey, hold that thought. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back with the lieutenant governor. Since 1921, we've been supporting rice farmers across America. These are the farmers who own our co-op, who prosper together, striving to do more for their communities, going deeper, working smarter, growing stronger. That's how we make good even better. That good comes from the time and toil they're passing down of a way of life that supports not only their families, but families all over the world. So the world can be served with great food. Riceland, united we grow. In good times and hard times, Arkansas Farm Bureau is there. We're always working. So our state's farmers and ranchers can continue to put food on store shelves and on your family's dinner table. We support training for medical care in rural communities and the industries that provide materials needed for critical supplies. Arkansas Farm Bureau, working every day to keep Arkansas strong. At Harvest, you have one goal, providing the perfect flow of grain from the field to the bend. Case IH Axial Flow Combines are engineered for matched capacity to deliver proven grain savings so you can keep efficiency flowing smoothly. Find yours with the Case IH Axial Flow.
Built upon a solid foundation of cast iron and steel, the Kubota L-Series tractor is the number one selling compact tractor in the U.S. for over 10 years. Powerful Kubota diesel engine, ease of operation, and your choice of a Kubota gear or HST transmission. The durable Kubota L-Series. Talk to your local Kubota dealer today to schedule a demo. Go to KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. No matter how you buy ag equipment, Ag Direct can finance it. We're powered by Farm Credit, people who know agriculture. So along with options to purchase, lease, or refinance, Ag Direct offers attractive rates, helpful service, and ag-friendly terms. When you compare the price of iron, be sure to compare your cost of money. Ask for Ag Direct. Built for agriculture. Powered by Farm Credit. Make sure you're prepared for the busy planting season ahead with Great Plains planters and drills available at Heritage Agriculture. The Great Plains lineup of planters and drills including the 3P4025AH twin row and YP825 planters are accurate, dependable planting solutions ready to help you kick off your planting season. Heritage Agriculture, the seven locations to serve you. We're customer focused, customer driven, and we want your business. Welcome back to Arkansas Farm Talk. I'm with Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin. Tim, we were talking about taxes, and you mentioned Texas, and you mentioned Tennessee, also Missouri. Like, you know, we've got a couple stores up in northeast Arkansas. Well, I know Missouri, they don't charge taxes on parts, but we yeah. have to. Yeah, so now, uh, so we were talking about the general tax situation, and I want to just say, I want to give credit where credit's due. The governor and the legislature have made uh, some good steps on the income tax but we got to keep going uh, and and to deal with that we got to deal with the the spending part of the equation you can't just deal with the tax side without dealing with the spending side but on the specifics as it relates to farmers I think you're talking about some of the specific provisions where other states give farmers uh, some sort of break yes uh, in terms of what they pay taxes on and what they don't pay taxes on versus what what happens to that same farmer here and you're mentioning the tax on parts. So if you're on the Missouri side, uh, you're getting a deal, or mm -hmm. a little better deal, than if you're on the Arkansas side. And, and that can be a competitive disadvantage it is. for an Arkansas. I can tell you it yeah, is. Yeah, it is. It is. So let me, let me mention one thing. We don't have time to, to dig into the whole tax code, but let me mention one thing. I think it's fair to say, first of all, that our tax code needs a lot of work. And uh, it, it's been worked on over the years, and, and it ends up being a hodgepodge. And um, one of the areas that we really need to work on is depreciation schedules. So first and foremost, what I hear from some farmers is, look, our state depreciation schedules for equipment, for example, differ from the federal depreciation schedules. And some other states around us are more aligned with the federal. And so as a result, Arkansas farmers will pay more applying our state depreciation schedules uh, as opposed to some of the states around us. What I think we should do is look at to what degree we can sync ours with some of the federal depreciation rules. And people that I've talked with, farmers I've talked with, have indicated there would be some advantage in doing that. Why? Because number one, you're going to get a break on the money that you pay, but also you're going to have simplified taxes. Well, if you're a bigger farmer, you're spending a lot of money on professionals. I talked to one today that said he, he pays an accountant a lot of money every year to explain all these complicated rules. His quote was, it's a stinking mess. That mm -hmm. was his quote to me yeah. about some of the details of our tax code in this area. And he said to me, what if you're a small farmer yeah. or, a, or a new farmer? Yeah, you don't have that access. You, you, you don't know what you don't know maybe, and you may end up at the end of the year finding out you're surprised by how much you're going to have to pay. And you know what? He said, look, if we could get simplification with regard to the depreciation rules, for example, and that's just one example, but if we can get simplification, he told me 
I would spend less on outside help trying to figure something complicated out. And it would be easier to predict and plan year to year. Mm -hmm. And as you know, not only for regular non-farm business, but uh, small business and particularly farmers and ranchers, you've got to, you've got to be able to plan the best you Absolutely. can. Absolutely. And, and our tax code should not be a barrier. There's already mm -hmm. enough barriers like predicting the weather and everything else. Our tax code should not be another one of those barriers to planning how you're going to operate your farm. And so this is not something Tim Griffin came up with. You know, I've made dozens and dozens of calls talking with folks all over the state uh, who are farmers. And this is the feedback that I've been hearing from people. And as I mentioned, one of them I was talking with today, a mutual friend of ours. And so there's some real, real things that we could do that farmers would see a real change in their pocketbook as a result. And we need to look at doing those. Well, you know, you, you, I'm, and I appreciate you, you touching on the depreciation because I had that on my list to talk to you about. You brought it up and we're talking about taxes and everything else. One thing that we're fighting right now, leasing has become really, really big especially in the equipment game mm -hmm. with the prices of big equipment, with the trade war, with everything that's impacting the commodity prices. But so uh, a lot of customers, they want to look at three year leases with options to buy. The residuals are set on the backside mm -hmm. if they want to do that. Here's the deal. They still have to pay personal property tax. Even though it's a lease, they haven't bought it. But the, since they have the use of it, that, that piece of equipment, they have to pay personal property tax on it. And they, uh, lots of people just don't understand that. Well, I, I've seen some surprises in that area uh, in past years in my own life in the non-farm non part uh, where, where uh, we, had, we had a vehicle and didn't know how long we were going to keep it. It's a few years ago. And, uh, and we decided to lease it. We started getting all these surprise bills that we didn't know we were going to have to pay on that. And that's, a, that's similar to what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it catches them on the yeah. backside of it. Yeah. They, they don't see it coming. We, we tell them on the front, yeah. but then here comes a bill at the yeah. back. Well, and, and, and often you're not paying it directly to the government. You're paying it to the, 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 the owner of the vehicle who pays it for you. So you get a bill in the mail. It's just mm -hmm. like an extra, it's like an extra payment. Sure. that you've got to make. So we've got to look at the things that maybe were unintentional in the law, mm -hmm. but are making it difficult on farmers and small business owners. You know, small business owners and farmers are the backbone of our communities. Yes. A lot of the stuff that government wants to do, incentives and all these things, a lot of that is focused on bigger companies. Mm -hmm. But the the number one job creator are small to medium sized businesses and farms. Yes. And uh, so we've got to make sure, look, I'm all for having big, medium and small, absolutely. But let's, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater here. Mm. I mean, we, we've got, uh, most of the jobs are from medium to small size businesses. We got to make sure we're taking care of everybody. Yeah, and one out of six jobs in the state of Arkansas is directly, directly impacted by agriculture. That's right. and that's. $16 billion, 16 I think, billion. annually is, is, was the most recent number that I had. That's the economic impact. Wow. Mr. Mr. Lieutenant Governor, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Arkansas Farm Talk. No matter how you buy ag equipment, Ag Direct can finance it. We're powered by farm credit, people who know agriculture. So along with options to purchase, lease, or refinance, AgDirect offers attractive rates, helpful service, and ag-friendly terms. When you compare the price of iron, be sure to compare your cost of money. Ask for AgDirect. Built for agriculture. Powered by farm credit. A lot of land comes with a lot of work. The new Kubota MX Series has a lot to offer, including the versatility to mow, move hay bales, grade roads, and clear brush and snow. An optional spacious cab to keep you comfortable in any conditions. A front-end loader with excellent loader lift capacity, hydrostatic or gear transmission options, and affordably priced. Visit your local Kubota dealer today.
During these busy and challenging times, Crone wants you to know we've got your back. So we're offering you 90 days of deferred payments on select models of Crone mowers, tethers, rakes, and round balers. That's right, make no payments for 90 days. And you can choose from 0% financing options to get the new Crone equipment you need. Check out these low monthly payment examples on select models of new Crone equipment. A lot of land comes with a lot of work. The new Kubota MX series has a lot to offer, including the versatility to mow, move hay bales, grade roads, and clear brush and snow. An optional spacious cab to keep you comfortable in any conditions. A front end loader with excellent loader lift capacity, hydrostatic or gear transmission options, and affordably priced. Visit your local Kubota dealer today. At Case IH, we believe it's our job to provide you with solutions. That's why our Farmall and Maxim tractors, as well as our tools and attachments, are designed with you in mind. From mowing to baling to loading and more, we're here to help turn your to-dos into to-dones. At Case IH, we'll keep your days running smoothly with equipment that's durable, versatile, and highly efficient. No wonder farmers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Visit your local dealer or go to caseih.com forward slash livestock for more. Since 1921, we've been supporting rice farmers across America. These are the farmers who own our co-op, who prosper together, striving to do more for their communities, going deeper, working smarter, growing stronger. That's how we make good even better. That good comes from the time and toil they're passing down of a way of life that supports not only their families, but families all over the world. So the world can be served with great food. Riceland. United, we grow. Welcome back to Arkansas Farm Talk. I'm with Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin. All right, Tim, we're talking, we've talked about a lot of stuff about taxes, COVID-19, everything else. Let's talk about China. What's your perspective as Lieutenant Governor and you were a Colonel in the Army Reserve and uh, how concerned should we be about China? Well, look, uh, so I've been in the Army 24 years. I'm a commander at, at Fort Bragg, North Carolina right now in the Reserve and uh, I, yeah, I studied at the War College, got my master's at the Army War College. And what I like to tell people is at the War College, we didn't study the threat of Switzerland or France. We studied Russia and China. Why? Because they are strategic threats. Now, make no mistake, we're going to have to engage with China. Sure. We're going to have to trade with China. Absolutely. But we've got to do it without naivete. Yeah. We've got to do it with our eyes wide open. Absolutely. And just knowing who they are and what the communist Chinese government represents. Everybody's looking for an advantage. That's right. And, and countries do the same thing. E everybody's looking for an advantage, but here's the difference. Our friends in, in Britain and, and, and in Europe, et cetera, we share common values. And um, even our, our friends in Japan, for example, in the East, we share common values. That's not the case with China. Uh, they operate on a different set uh, of rules. And uh, I, look, I have always been concerned about the intellectual property theft and the piracy. Espionage. Yeah, yeah and espion economic espionage yes. even. Look, yes. it's not just about military and, and gathering intelligence on military items. It, it is about trying to get a, a, an economic advantage. In this state, just a few years ago, we had a, a gentleman in Stuttgart who was convicted of passing proprietary seeds to China. And, uh, and, and then we had a professor in the last few months at the University of Arkansas charged with taking money uh, from the Chinese and doing research benefiting the Chinese. So look, we, we need to be vigilant mm -hmm. uh, and smart about how we interact with them. Uh, I do believe that they've taken advantage of us for a long time in trade. And at some point, uh, it, it had been kicked down the road for a long time, and at some point we needed to, uh, to deal with it. I, uh, we have not gotten them purchasing all of what they promised about seven months ago. Yeah. They promised they were going to purchase uh, an additional $32 billion in agricultural products. Well, I think only like 39%, so under half of that, has actually been purchased by the Chinese at this point. But we've got to keep pushing them and pushing them and pushing them uh, so that they buy more agricultural products. 
Um, I would also say that, that we have, with the USMCA, if we're talking trade, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada uh, agreement, yes. that is supposed to add an additional $2 billion in exports. So we, we've got some things that are either in place or being negotiated that are good for farmers, uh, but um, we can't declare victory on all these fronts yet. We've got a long way to go. Uh, but I do think we have the best, I know for a fact, we have the best farmers, most efficient farmer, most advanced farmers in the world. Absolutely. And we, the sky's the limit on how much more we can sell than what we already sell. If we're given a level playing field, we will, we will beat them every single time. I don't care who the country is, we will beat them every single time. And that's why I'm always so optimistic about tomorrow and what can happen. But right now, we've got to keep, we've got to keep the pressure on uh, other countries, and particularly China, uh, to continue to buy our goods and to give us fair and open access to their markets. Well, you know, our farmers and ranchers are the greatest in the world. You got it. And we can produce enough food to feed the world. And that's one of the things in my mind that makes us the greatest country in the world. And that's, that's what separates us from China and Russia. Yep. They can't do that. Well, it, that's exactly right. And, and, and since you've mentioned that, I, I just want to say this. Our technology, our innovation, uh, in terms of, of seeds and fertilizer, et cetera. That is a huge advantage. We do so much incredible research uh, not around the country, but here in Arkansas. And now I just want to put a plug in. That's why science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM education yes. is so important. That's not just a computer thing. That's, that's for the farming community. That's for all different sectors in Arkansas. So important. Um, and I, and I wanted to mention one more thing. I know we got to wrap this up, but I, I just want folks to know, if you ever need me, I got the same cell phone I've been giving out for 15 years. Uh, just put it in your phone. Just call me, text me. Here's my cell phone, 501-837-5190, 501-837-5190. I want every farmer and rancher, everybody in the ag community in this state to have my cell phone. And uh, if you can't get me, just leave me a message. I'll call you back. Well, I don't know that we've ever had a politician do that and give out their, their personal phone number. But I can it's tell you, I, I, I have great admiration for you. Thank you. I want to personally thank you for everything that you do to stand up and fight for the for, uh, Arkansas farmers and ranchers. Thank and you. we didn't get through half what we needed to get through. Let's, so you're let's gonna do it have again. To, you're going to have to come back. I'm okay? going to take this with me and I'll bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Governor, on behalf of farmers and ranchers in Arkansas, thank you for everything. Thank you. We'll see you next week on Arkansas Farm Talk. Thank you for watching Arkansas Farm Talk, brought to you by Heritage Agriculture.